Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, Nigel with you, Nigel's Mom on the Bench, and this is now part two, and should be the final part, maybe there'll be three, I don't know, but it should be two, of the Bismarck turret build from Tacon, and here you can see on the bench, the total, actually that's a lie, here on the bench you can see this is the total kit now, so you can see the turret is mainly all assembled, we've got those little railings around the top, they're lovely, so much nicer than the, um, the ones on the uh, Yamato turret, on the photo actually, they're horrible. Um, we've got all the vents and everything there. We've got the vents here with the ladders included and everything and you can see we've got the Beautifully molded mesh there, which is going to take a wash beautifully and they're going to look lovely we've Got the blast bags there to have the barrels in the In the forward-facing Configuration so you can see they fit absolutely beautifully. He says there you go. they fit absolutely lovely So they're going to go in after they're painted and everything so that'll all look really good again better than the Yamato kit um, and then we've got these. I thought these were actually uh, containers for cleaning rods for the barrels. They're not. They're actually um, armament secondary barrels or something. So they're spare barrels for something or other. So we've got another vent there. We've got our bits and pieces in there. We've got some ladders and little tiny detail parts. And we've got a photo etch. Uh, again, as I say, with the um, Yamato build, they have these photo etch railings around the top of the turret. They look horrible. And I think these also look horrible because you've got a photo etch railing. Um, with photo etch wires in between which is all well and good but obviously the stanchions wouldn't be this thin section of brass they would be round so we're gonna have to do something about that what I'll probably do is put some white glue on there or something and it will dry it'll, it'll sort of dry and round it'll give it a bit of a round section but again here with these railings they're gonna look horrible just in brass so I'm gonna actually do something with them uh, I thought about replacing them but it'd just be a lot of work really unnecessarily so um, we'll look at uh, doing something with them We've got these covers here to go over the vents, so they're, some of them will be open, some will be closed. We've got the catwalks and everything, so that's all going to look lovely once it's on. But the first thing we have to do, as I mentioned at the end of part one, we have to get this thing painted. Now, as I talked about again in part one, what I was going to do, you can see I've painted the deck, and then I was going to do all the deck, and then mask the deck, paint the black, mask the black, paint the grey. But obviously it's easier, as I said, it's easier to mask here than it is to mask there because here it's just like going around a cylinder with a straight piece of tape here you would need to cut the tape or use a piece of curve line tape and mask into the corner of the it'd be really difficult so what I'm going to do is paint it grey first then mask the grey and paint the black then mask the black and paint the deck that's going to be the easiest way to do it and get the sharpest cleanest lines so that's what we're going to do so I need to have painted the deck so at the end of the part one I put out a request for what colour do you think I should use and a couple of people responded, and two I remember was James, James Mower, thank you very much mate. He suggested I use the LP32, which is a light grey for the Japanese Navy, because it's a bit greyer than what I was talking about, which is the LP34, which is almost like an off-white colour. Now, I actually have in my mind, because of photographs I've seen, which are obviously black and white, that this is more accurate than that. And I was looking around for instructions, painting instructions. So obviously you can't trust what trumpeters say because they very rarely get the colours right. <clears throat> and quite often they don't call up colours that exist. I mean, look at the Yamato. It doesn't call up any of the colours that Tamiya make for their Imperial Japanese Navy. They do the QRA grey, they do the hull colour, they do the deck colour, and they haven't called up those colours at all. So you've got XF75, which is QRA grey for the acrylic paints, and you have LP12, which is Curé Grey, Curé Arsenal Grey for the um, for the, the lacquer paints. So they're you're, you're well catered for. So I have a feeling that this has been made for Bismarck because it's a very very light grey. Then I got an email the other day from Peter, and we can get my phone here. We can see it's unlocked. Right. So I had this email from Peter, and it sounds like Peter's a bit of a Bismarck fan. He's been building them for forty years. He's from uh, Perth in Australia. Um, so basically he's saying that the colours I have found are RAL 7000 for the hull, 7001 light grey for the superstructure and RAL 7024 for the dark grey bow and stern. So as we know the hull was one colour, the superstructure was a lighter colour and then the ends of the hull were painted a darker grey so that it looked like a different ship at night so they couldn't spot it and recognise it and stuff. So 
basically um, the only paint I've been able to find of the three is RAL 7001 light grey which is from AK Real Colours which they call silver grey and their code is RC210. This may or may not be the right match but, it's, but it may be close. So he says he's going to use XF19 for the hull but if you remember, <clears throat> I've got a frog in my throat, if you remember I looked at the Flyhawk 1700 scale instructions on scale mates and they suggested XF19 for the structure for the superstructure which is a very light grey but Peter's gone one further and actually sent me these colour swatches now I know we can't really trust these but basically we've got this one here for the hull and he said XF19 is a very close match and you can see there that it is a very very close match and we can see that the LP34 is lighter okay so He's given me a colour match for the three, and lo and behold, there we go. So I've got the LP32 here, which is the IJN one, and it's actually darker. And when you put it next to XF19, it's actually like a almost the same colour. It's very slightly lighter, but it's got like more of a greeny tinge to it, I'd say. So I would say this for the hull, which I don't have a hull, obviously, and this for the superstructure. So that's what I'm going to go with. And when I do eventually build my 200th Bismarck, that's what I'm going to use, LP34. So get ready, edit premium hobbies. I'm going to send you an order for a load of this one day. So I've just um, actually bought every bottle of LP12 he had. So there we go. And then Paul tried to get some for his Yamato and they didn't have any. So sorry, Paul. So basically that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint my Bismarck turret, all of this, all the structure work, all the metal work. I'm going to do it in LP34. Why am I using LP paints? Basically, if you use Tamiya acrylic paints directly on plastic, it will scratch off very easily. And if you have got any grease or finger marks or whatever, when you mask, the, the paint will be pulled off by the masking tape. LP paints are designed to go straight on plastic. You don't need primer. You can actually use them as a primer. Um, so you can put it straight onto the plastic. That way you don't obliterate detail. You have less paint to scrape off when you're going to fit parts and also when you are scraping paint where you're not making such a deep impression because you've only got a thin layer of paint. So the plan now is to go out and spray all of this superstructure area around here. I'll probably go all the way up, paint the whole thing light grey and then leave that for a few hours and then I can mask it, paint the black and then mask the black and then we can work on the deck. So that's why I'm saying this video might be three parts because it's a lot more farting about than we had with um, Yamato and also with doing those railings and stuff. So. I'll get that painted and I'll see you back in a minute. Okay, so there's an exercise in pretty much everything what not to do when building a plastic model. Um, some of you will know I often go on about look through your kit, you know, fuel tank halves, air tank halves, you know, drop tanks, bombs, whatever you're building. Get those halves together when you start and then when you actually come to need them, the glue will have dried back. The solvents will have come out of this. Any seams or anything that need to be dealt with can be dealt with. The problem is if you glue these barrels together, okay, for instance, glue these young barrels together, then paint them, then or we'll prime them, sand them, deal with the seam, paint them and everything. Look at your model a week later and you'll see seams in there because that's what happens. And here you can see, I don't know if you're going to catch it in the light, but I put an extra band of paint down there because it's very, very faint and I'm thinking the paint will be enough to thin it out but this seam here this main seam running along the the um i forget the name of it again now but uh i'll remember in a minute the uh, barbette that's right um the seam running along there there's no mr surface in it it's just literally welded together with plastic cement and then let dry but if i can catch it in the light you may be able to see a seam there and that is where the solvents have evaporated from the glue and it's left a seam behind and this is what happens. We can see the same here. Okay, there is a seam there. I where my finger is, where the Mr. Surfacer was. And I don't know if the light's going to pick it up, but there is a seam there and I can see a line. And that's where the solvents and the Mr. Surfacer have all shrunk back. And we've got the same here. The other thing I've got is overspray type of dust along here. So we can see that underneath there. So that's going to have to be rubbed down. I've got bits of fluff stuck in it in the corners. So basically everything that could have gone wrong with this has gone wrong. But, um, the LP paint has gone down beautifully. I've thinned it with um, Tamiya lacquer thinners, retarder type, um, rather than using up all my Mr. Mr. Colour thinners. But uh, yeah, so 
there we go so I'm gonna to have to basically leave this now for a good I don't know six eight hours wherever to dry sand out these bits where there's fluff deal with these seams here here and here and then we'll go from there but it's the color I think the color is perfect absolutely spot on so that is Tamiya LP 34 so um, yeah really happy with that so we're gonna to have to leave that you can see how dark it is how light it is now compared to the Mr. Color the uh, Mr. Leveling Thinners uh, Mr. Surfacer, God almighty, come on Nigel. <laughs> so there we are. So yeah, we're going to have to leave that now. Sorry for my blasphemous comment there. Uh, uh, some people do get upset about them. Um, so yeah, there's the. Uh, there we are. That's that all done. So we're going to wait for that to dry, sand it, and then paint it again. And then I'll probably get it masked and paint the black. And then I'll come back and see what I've done that, I expect. By magic, we're all done. All painted. So I've done the grey. I masked off the grey. I've done the black. I masked off the black and I've done the brown so now we're going to have a look and see how it looks unmasked because I know you guys everybody loves to see an unmasking don't they and you will see on here I have used some blue masking tape and this stuff is awesome um, it's really really good it's here let's pack it where is it let's pack it here it is just to prepare it as usual this is the new Mr. Masking Tape Low Adhesion, 10 millimeters. I got this from Premium Hobbies. Okay, if you want to get some, don't forget 10% off if you use the code NMB10. That's my discount code. But it's absolutely brilliant. It's really, really thin. Um, and it is low adhesion, so it's perfect for masking where you need to be masking over paint and stuff. Because this, I'm using LP paints and no primers. So basically, I'm, I don't know how good the paint sticks. Now let me grab a pair of tweezers, once again unprepared. I've done this lower area in sections because it was very difficult to get the tape down behind those shoots. But we can see here, the other thing about it is it's really easy to pick up the corner. You know it's quite often difficult to pick up the corner and you end up scratching what's underneath. But this stuff it's really easy to get the corner as you can see. And as you can see, I've got it all unmasked and it's bloody lovely it's really really nice now they don't tell you to do this black line in the instructions but I can assure you Bismarck has that now I've looked at some photographs and it doesn't appear it doesn't appear to have it around the back of the barbette here okay now I would have thought it would have but it doesn't now I'm going to save this piece of masking tape so I can use it again because what I've done I've painted over all these racks for those tubes I've painted over them so I'm gonna to have to now mask and paint them again but again I'm using it's the easier process of masking is it's basically it's easier to mask on here and paint that than try and mask them and paint around them so that's what I'm gonna do so somebody's I don't know if you can hear that but outside there's a child screaming they obviously they've been put in the car and they don't want to go anywhere but there we go we can see now it's all looking lovely I've also done around the bottom of these vents if I can get the tape to come up there we go so they're all looking good as well get off tape I've used the sizeo tape for this because it's it's got a very hard edge. It's really good for masking. It's actually for curved lines. It's very, very good when you want a nice hard edge like in there. It's really, really good for that. Now, the other thing, the, the bad news is I've used that LP34 paint. Um, and I have done this. I'll do that in a minute. Let's see what this hatch looks like. go so that's all looking grey still I'm not really worried about how good the masking is because we're painting around there with a brush we'll be painting in the um, the wooded area but I just want to see how good it looks so the main thing there is to get don't just mask over the top go down the edges as well so the edges of the hatch remain grey as well so I'm going to try and get this tape off of here which is fun come on Bloody sticks to, <laughs> sticks to everything except what you want it to stick to. 
get off. Right. We've got this one here. What I've done here, guys, I've used like a 3mm wide tape. And to make sure it stays stuck in around the back, I've gone around with like a 2mm wide tape over the top of it. To sort of act like a, almost like a Jubilee clip to hold it in. And as you can see, we've got all our bits all nicely masked and we got our brown base down. And remember this is literally just a base for more work and I tend to use watercolours and oils and all sorts to get this all looking dandy but um, you can see already I mean it's it's a lot nicer the base it's a lot nicer than the um, this here is not overspray you can see these dark areas although you can I can in real life but you can on the camera it's really weird there's a dark there's a dark blotch there and it's a reflection of the black it's not a dark blotch it's unusual but um you can see here when we get these vents on here's one of the vents here it's literally as I showed you before they literally clip into place get it to go down in there we go we can leave that and not glue it I think <laughs> what I might do is just put some glue on the base at the back or something but uh, you can see that they, they look really good with that um, with the black around the bottom, which is how they were in real life. If you look at photographs of Bismarck, you'll see what I mean. One other thing I just want to point out while I think of it, these two here, this one, and this one, okay, the two narrower ones, <clears throat> they, um, they have an ejector pin mark in the back there, you can see. And the ejector pin mark is left like a sink in the middle of the panel there. You can see where I filled them in. So I would advise doing that before you paint it as well. And I've primed these um, literally because I wanted to see what they were like. Um, I've primed these because obviously we've got the, the detail around there. And I wanted to check that's all good. And I want to check that all the ladders are good and everything here. So uh, yeah, it's all coming along. So um, I'm going to get these bits here masked up and painted now. And then... Uh, in fact, I might even leave it till after we've done all the brown work, the deck work, but it might be a lot easier then rather than having to paint around them. So, um, yeah, I'll do that then. I'll leave it for now. So, uh, I'll see you back for some painting. Sorry, guys, I was saying, wasn't I? I painted all this with LP34. This here is LP65, rubber black, and this here is LP16, deck tan. I've also painted the turret. As you can see there, I glued the little... Uh, ladders and bits and pieces on it, did some seam work on the um, range finders and everything and the turret's looking lovely and I've literally used a whole jar, I thinned it about 50 to 50 50 and um, yeah I've literally used a whole jar you can see I've still got thin areas here that need doing it going over I've since been looking in my um, books and it looks like maybe this area here would have been dark grey so I've wasted a load but uh, the coverage of LP34 is awful I mean it's basically you can see the colour of the plastic beneath it that's all it's got to do and it's just layer upon layer up there's probably about five coats on here it's just ridiculously bad at covering I can understand if it was Mr Surface or Primer and it's soaking into the primer and letting the grey come through but it's on plastic it should just cover this has had about four coats around here and this seam if you remember this seam came back didn't it here so I sanded that out and that's completely disappeared now so um yeah, really, really happy with how this is coming out. It's looking really, really nice. And uh, I love I got that very, very light grey colour. So, and as you can see, the masking here is not perfect, but it doesn't matter because we've got to be brush painting all this and getting all around there anyway. So I may give it all a clear coat before we start and then it won't soak into the paint. So um, I will be back. And again, just one other thing I wanted to talk about before we carry on. Oh, it must come out. Come on, come out. Right. This piece here in the instructions, I think it's TP24, is it? Yeah, TP24. You can see here in the instructions, we've got this little piece of photo etch that goes in the front here. And they're showing you a, a view front on, front, front on, front on, to show you that it's going actually below, beneath, beneath, what, I can't talk today, beneath that bolting on bracket. Now what they've done, they've given you it, this little piece of photo etch here, where my finger is, They've given you that as a piece of photo etch that glues directly on. If I was a kit designer, I would have put a recess in here, say back three or four mil, and had that gluing on so you've got a nice big surface. What I actually did to glue that on, 
I put it on with some tape put masking tape across this face just to hold it level and then I touched in the corners with some super glue and then I just went along and let super glue wick into the gap and then sanded it flat um, you can see I've still got I don't know if you can see there's still a little ridge there where I could do with sanding it out some more but I'm not going to bother because I don't want to risk removing too much super glue because it's just going to fall off because basically it has the surface area of its edge and it's going to be rubbing on here and it goes round so we don't want it just breaking off and I used my new super glue this sounds like a salesman it's not I used this stuff this is the slow dry black cyanacrylate from uh, I got this from again premium hobbies um, but it's actually uh, a Megamo product and I really like it um, it doesn't dry straight away but it doesn't leave you hanging around like gone off super glue but it has a very nice texture that sort of it's thin enough to wick into gaps, but thick enough that it doesn't just go everywhere. And you can see we've got a really nice join, and it's tough. It's 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 you know it's not all brittle and going to fall off. I think you'll find with these black super glues, I think they've got a rubber compound in them that gives them a bit of flexibility, so they're not so brittle. I'll just show you just while we're here. Here we go. That's how it's going to look. You can see it looks bloody lovely, doesn't it? But um. And also you can see there that photo etch piece is right on the edge there. So we don't want to go knocking that around too much. But uh, yeah, I'm really, really pleased with how these railings came out. These round railings around the top as well. They're really nice, so much better than the photo etch ones on the um, on the Yamato turret. So uh, Yamato, sorry. So uh, yeah, there we go. So I'm going to go away now and get some painting done and I'll show you what I've been doing. Okay, and we're back. And as you can see here, I've been doing some painting. And there we go. You can see on there, we've got the really gaudy looking planking on there. As you can see, I've painted it in brown. I haven't done it perfectly on purpose. I want streaks and brush marks and all sorts in it to sort of, you can see here, to sort of replicate the wood grain. And when we put some washes on there and stuff, it's all going to blend in all the great the um the panel lines will all come out so i haven't touched this so what we'll do is we'll do this on camera we'll do some of it on camera i'll just show you randomly how i do it i'll start in the middle and then we can um what's that stuck on stuck on something i'll start in the middle and then we can work our way out but i want to do the um the bit around here first and then you can work into it so around there i think they would have used like a darker wood like perhaps a tiki sort of color um this paint is quite warm today so it's drying very fast on here uh, I would use my wet palette, but it's one I got from Amazon. It was a cheap one, and it is absolute crap. The paper is just falls apart, and you end up getting fibres on the brush. Like it looks like bristles coming out. It's um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. So what I'm going to do is come in here and with this paint, pretty heavily thinned. This is why we've done the brown underneath and the matte varnishes because basically what we're doing is almost washing this rather than painting it. So what I'm going to do here is come in nice and close to the edge. But without with trying not to get onto the actual grey paint, and then what we'll do is we'll let the wash take care of the the final join. Make sure we get some paint down in there. I'm going to come out to these panel lines. I'm not sure if you can see what I'm doing. Perhaps I'll zoom you in some. There we go. Now you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'll just come out to these edges here. As I say, if if the paint runs out onto the Onto the next plank it doesn't matter not at all because remember this is wood it's not a it's not like a precision thing just looking where this ends I need a shadow you see to see the ends which probably means you can't see what I'm doing but uh, it's probably more important that I see what I'm doing than you with all due respect <laughs> if you know what I mean uh, right, so there's that done there, and we can just darken that in now with a little bit more paint. Just darken in that area. Because I think you'll find that on the edgings they always use like a darker wood, I think. Okay, and then just come into here and go around these little stepped areas. And if I was weathering this, I'd be looking at where ladders are, where people would have walked, where people would have stepped, marking the wood or whatever. But in this case, we don't have that. 
because it's a museum these it's kind of unweathered for now at least I may decide to weather them later I still haven't done the um, Yamato I still haven't done the Yamato uh, railings so that is as yet unfinished You get the general idea that's just going in there and as you can see I'm leaving it blotchy it doesn't matter because when we come along and put the stains on the oils it will make a hell of a difference okay so there we go and then what I do is get a different color like over here we'll get this one perhaps add a bit of that into it darken it up a touch thin it right out and then we can go around this hatch like so that's a much much denser colour so thin it about a bit more and that will get us a different shade just like that and then bit more of that in there and add some more and brush that down there and as you can see what I'm actually doing is just basically just painting planks simple as that so I'm going to carry on do some more and then we'll end up with something like that and there we go, all done, all done with the watercolours, you can see, well not watercolours, the Viejo, Viejo game colour. So we can see it's all quite gaudy, all over and done, and now we're going to knock it all back. So in here I have, in there, I have the Modeler's World Oil Wash Old Rust, I have the Modeler's World Oil Wash Black Brown, and I have the Modeler's World Oil Wash Light Brown, and I'm going to grab a clean paper towel, like so fold it into four and that will be like a blotting pad to clean the brush in between okay so we can put that there and then we've got a fairly large brush uh, it's actually a number five brush uh, so we can get plenty down we don't want to be like picking away at it uh, I'm also going to get a couple of cotton buds now we've got the fluffy type Johnson's cotton buds here um, which are the fluffy ones and then Simon, thank you very much, sent me some of these lovely wooden sticked ones. Now, these are really hard, so these are good if you want to wipe it away. These are good if you just want to sort of blend and stuff. So we'll have those there as well. So we'll start off with the light brown. And in here I've got some of the Modeler's World oils thinner and cleaner. So I'm going to thin this out some. The black you can see in there is remnants. It's not actually part of the wash. And you can see when I pull this up the side, it's basically invisible. So I'm going to start down here, I'm just going to brush this in. You can see it's making very, very little difference, but it will pick up in the lines. And it will kind of act like a filter. And the other thing it's doing, it's wetting the area for subsequent applications. So we can just brush that on there, just brush it all over liberally. Obviously try and not splash it on the grey, but it will be easy to remove with some oil thinners afterwards and we'll do the same up here as you can see it's making very very little difference but it's, it's subtlety it's blending it all in together it's what we want is this kind of filtering effect and it also starts to make the brush marks with a bad painting however you want to term it it sort of makes it start to look more like wood. As you can see, we've still got this gaudy look to it. I'm trying, I'm going to attempt to end up with a lighter tone than we did with the Yamato because I believe Bismarck decks were lighter in colour. But if we do end up with that darker colour, then you know so be it but you can see now how it's sort of bang it's brought it all out it's made it um you know sort of look more like some decking rather than just all 
paint. Um, so now I'm going to get some of this. I'm going to mix some of this really thin in here. I'm just going to dab the brush on my cotton. On my paper towel, sorry, not cotton towel. Just remove and just sort of put this on. As you can see, I'm kind of dabbing it on so it sort of sits in and it gives it a kind of uneven look rather than this uniform. And as you can see what it does, it's sort of got too much on there. It kind of takes on this, the actual looks like proper wood because it's Because wood is never just a constant colour, well it is, some wood is like balsa wood and stuff I guess, but generally wood tends to wood tends to fluctuate in colour along its length. And you can see that what we've done there is we've got that sort of wood look coming to it now and we've got the lighter tone than we had with uh, Yamato. Okay, I'm going to keep it off the grey bits because we we're not trying to add a wash to highlight or uh, highlight panel lines and stuff. We're just trying to we're just trying to add some effects to make this look more like a wooden deck. If we go right over to the edge here, it will actually pull into the. Um, I think Jess is about to bark. There we go. One man and his dog, you see, you get to know your dog. And there we are, that's our initial. initial look at getting a, a wood deck look. You can see there, I think we've achieved it. Okay, and bear in mind, you know, I, I doubt you could do this on a 1 50th scale because it's so small, but you could probably do this on a 200th. Um, and I personally believe, I actually seriously do believe this looks better than any wooden deck. Because when you look at a wooden deck, they're all sort of monocolour. Now you can get the scale decks, they have this sort of effect, which, without wishing to knock them, I think it's slightly overdone, but that's good because it's overdone, you can knock it back. If it was underdone, it's very difficult to bring it up, but you could seal it, you know, put those scale decks down, seal it, and then do this sort of thing, and it will have exactly the same effect. So you could lighten it down, you could darken it up, you could add some red. I mean, talking about adding red, we could come along here, get some of that red in there, just dab the brush down and then just, just put some red in certain areas, just dab it on. As you can see it blends in with everything else that's there, but it will give us a sort of the tonal changing. Again, you know, do not want uniform. Do not want it to be uniform. We want it to be Uneven. Make sure we get it to the corners so it sinks into those corners. I'm going to put some of this darker brown into here. Do the same up here. I 
I'll make sure we get it into those corners and I'm going to take some paint off the brush or take some thinners off the brush should I say and just go around and just wick up the excess bits there and there we are I'm just going to add a bit of dark into this corner to liven it up a bit Perhaps add some more in here to get it into the, the panel lines as it were, the lines in between the decks. They come along and wick some up. As long as you keep it wet it will all just sort of blend out and sort itself. And there we are. A bit more down here. I'm sorry if you're getting bored watching this, but I know there are a lot of people that would want to see this right the way through, so I didn't want to bore you with showing me painting the planks because that's something that anybody can do. But the way I'm doing this is something that a lot of newer modelers will be very interested in and giving it a go. And as I say, there is nothing to stop you giving this a go because if you don't like it, you can get some thinners, brush it on there, wipe it all off and start again and it won't affect the water paint underneath. There we are. There is our wooden deck pretty much finished. Now what I will do is let that dry off for 24 hours and then I'll give it a clear coat of acrylic and then I might do some more work with it to try and bring it back a bit, try and take away some of the darkness, but um, I'm really happy that that's come out. It's got a proper, proper wood look, it, wood look to it, which is a bit difficult to see because it has a bit of a sheen. Now, I just want to show you one thing before I go. This area here, if I did, if I thought it was a bit too dark and I didn't want to, I could just go over the cotton bud look. take some of the wash away. I can rub over that hatch and get rid of that. Get rid of the oil from there. What I can do in a minute is get a clean brush with some clean thinners and just brush over that. But then if I've taken a bit too much off I can come along and add some more. You see it was starting to dry out so I've Just add it back to those areas I wiped it out from. Because what it does, it will pull it out. It will pull it out of the um, the lines in between the planks. We don't want that. We want it to stay in those lines. And there we go. So we can let that dry. And as you saw with um, Yamato, Yamato, however you say it. Um, what we can do is come along afterwards with a piece of tissue, piece not uh, not a piece of tissue, a piece of a t-shirt material, a piece of cloth. In fact, I've still got it here. Look, come along with that, and we can wipe over and sort of tone it all down a bit. But you can see here, it's starting to lose its shine now, so you can see how much better it looks when it's not shiny. Okay, so you've seen how I do that now. So that's uh. Really, really easy and gives quite a, an interesting effect. It's definitely wood. It's probably overdone, but you want it overdone. You want it to be, you know, look what I've done. It's plastic and it looks like wood. There we go. So I'll see you all soon for part three. I said this was going to be a two-parter. I'm going to make it a three-parter basically because I want to get a video out and I'm still waiting for paint to be delivered and I can't carry on. I've got all this here. I've got all this here all ready to be painted. I can't do anything with it. I can't paint it because I'm waiting. So um, I could go on and paint the blast bags, I guess, but that is about it. So uh, now we've got all that done, uh, wait for this to dry, seal it up. I'll mask off and spray these supports here. And then um, and then that'll be it, job done, and we can start putting it all together. So um, thanks for watching. Thanks for staying with me. As I say, sorry if you've been a bit bored, 
but uh, hopefully you've learned something from it and hopefully you'll give it a go because it really is worth giving a go. It's a lot of fun and it's, it's um, you know, you can see the finished effect is well worth it. And as I say, if you've got a too big 200 scale ship, get a film on, get some music on in the background and just get your brushes out and go for it. Okay guys, so I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.